So the big question is, what is an operating system? So there are tons of operating systems that you haven't heard about. But let's talk about the main ones. You have Windows, Mac OS, and also GNU slash Linux. These are all the main types of operating systems that are available today. So what are they? Well, they are incredibly complex structures of programs. An operating system is not a single program. And I want to demonstrate this by even explaining something so simple as a web browser. Now consider this. Your web browser looks to you like a single program. It just looks like one window, one web browser, one program. However, it's not. Your web browser has lots of other little programs that deal with things. For example, your web browser receives HTML files. That's the structure of the page. And it also receives a CSS file that styles the page. And then also you receive JavaScript files that allow you to click on certain elements on the page and it performs certain actions. And so HTML and CSS are markup languages and those go to the web engine. And then also you have the JavaScript files that go to the JavaScript compiler. But these are essentially mini applications and these mini applications deal with different parts of the program. So it may look like one program on the surface, but in fact that program contains miniature applications to deal with certain jobs. You don't get to see these little programs working in the background, but they are there. So even though it looks like one solid application, it's just one on its own, it's not. It actually has lots of other little applications running in the background dealing with certain programming languages. Well, your operating system on the surface to a user may look like one giant application. Not true. An operating system is made up of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of programs and each program has a specific task. Now, all of these programs need to be able to communicate with one another and every single operating system out there has a structure. It has a protocol. Again, whenever you think of a protocol, think structure, system, the way things are organized, an operation, an operating system controls how all of these miniature programs communicate with one another to make an operating system work. You have to have all these smaller programs that combine together and when you combine them together you get the results that you have on your computer. Now each operating system has a name for their protocol if you will. Windows has DOS. DOS is not a programming language. DOS is a way in which you structure all of these mini applications and eventually when you combine them together, you'll get Windows. Now, likewise, you have Mac OS. Mac OS has a structure and a protocol for its applications. It's called Unix. Unix is, again, not a programming language. What it is, is the ability for all of those mini programs, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, all to communicate with one another, and it ends up as Mac OS. And finally, you have the glorious, completely open GNU slash Linux. You can download GNU slash Linux as an operating system. You can tinker with it, modify with it, come up with your own version and actually distribute your own operating system without having to write every last little program that makes up an entire OS called GNU slash Linux. So you can do that. You can come up with, let's say, the Avalex OS and that could be your operating system and you can distribute that to other people. That's the beauty of GNU slash Linux. It makes it different from Windows and Mac OS because they are locked down. They are proprietary, meaning they are owned. Their source code is locked and nobody else can download it and distribute it how they see fit. But GNU slash Linux is different. It's open. Anybody can do that. And there have been a lot of people that do that. Some of the main distributions are Ubuntu and you also have Debian and OpenSUSE. 
you have all of these different companies that took GNU slash Linux and then they adapt it and they add bits to it and they share it with the community and everything gets bigger and better and it's just a wonderful community. And so what people do is they tend to call it Linux, but you could say the operating system name is the name the company gave it when they distributed it. So the operating system name, for example, Ubuntu. So that's what they labeled it. But the actual system is GNU slash Linux. Now GNU is the protocol, it is the structure in which all of those tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of programs, GNU calls them packages, but they are just programs, and they all communicate with one another, and you end up with, let's say, Ubuntu, or Debian, or OpenSUSE, or whatever it is. And the reason why we've got slash Linux is the fact that Linux was sort of adopted because we like saying Linux. It rolls off the tongue very nicely. Instead of saying GNU or GNU slash Linux, you'll just hear most people say Linux. But Linux is actually a single program within the GNU operating system. It's a single program called a kernel. Now the job of a kernel in any operating system, in Windows the kernel is called a kernel, Mac OS you also have a kernel and in GNU slash Linux you also have a kernel and the kernel in GNU slash Linux is called Linux. The job of a kernel program is very significant. What it is there to do is allocate resources and make sure that your computer works well because you need to be able to control memory access. You don't want your memory filling up too much. And you need to be able to say that, okay, we've got five applications open. These five applications need to share the same memory. You've still got the same physical RAM sticks in your computer. So we need to be able to segment that up and allocate memory where it's needed. And so that's what a kernel is all about. It's ultimately about making sure that things get allocated correctly and shared correctly. That's a very broad generalization, but that is basically what it is. So I thought I'd explain that GNU is the system and Linux is the kernel and every operating system has a kernel. Every operating system you can open up several programs and those programs need to be able to share memory and share resources so that everything can function smoothly.